Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Salatu wassalam ala sayyid al-muslimin Habibina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Allahumma halla alayna shahr Ramadan bil amni wal iman wa salama wal islam This is the first lesson bi Allah taken from the book of Imam Suyuti where he discusses the themes and the topics of different surahs in the Qur'an and we all know that this month is a blessed month it's the month where Allah decreed for the Qur'an to be revealed it says in the Qur'an Shahr Ramadan الَّذِي أَنزَلَ فِيهِ أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ هُدًا للناس. This is the month that Allah has sent down the Qur'an as a guide for mankind وَبَيِّنَاتِ مِنْ الْغُلَابُ الْفُرْقَانِ It's the month that describes and instructs to what is guidance and what is uprightness. And studying the Qur'an is also from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he used to review the Qur'an with Jibreel Alayhi Salam every year, looking at its ayat, looking at its meanings, looking at its order. <coughs> and this is also the way of the Salaf al-Salih, Hassan al-Basri Rahimahullah said, but the purpose of the Qur'an today has been lost because now it's just become mere recitation. People are only just reciting the Qur'an, this is the only connection that they have with it. Whereas the Salaf al-Salih, they wanted to understand the Qur'an and implement it and know what is wanted from them. This is what Allah says in the Qur'an, الَّذِينَ أَتَيْنَهُ kitab يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَدِ Those people have been given the Qur'an they recite the Qur'an with its true recitation. أُولَٰئِكَ يُؤْمِنُونَ bit. Those are those people who actually believe in it. So they recite it, they understand it, they implement it. This is what constitutes belief in the Qur'an. And this is the month also where the Salaf al-Salih used to take extreme care in reciting the Qur'an and seeking to understand it also. It's been narrated that Qatada, one of the, the pious tabi'een, who was also a student of Anas bin Malik, عن, used to complete the Qur'an every three nights in Ramadan. Every three nights in Ramadan. And he used to teach it every night in Ramadan. So this clearly shows you that he used to have a personal interaction with the Qur'an and he also used this month of Ramadan to teach the Qur'an so that people can benefit from it also. It's very difficult for us to go through a juz every single day, especially 20 minutes, especially when the days are long. And but this book that we have in front of us of Imam Suyuti, he basically gets the different surahs and he gives you the rough summary of the surah and the theme of that surah. So he comprises the tafsir into a very easy manner that we can digest and we can still benefit from immensely. And this is a type of tafsir that the ulama have also taken care of, also given a lot of importance to looking at the themes and looking at how the ayat and the surahs are connected. So beginning this book, Imam Suyuti sets a principle when he's talking about Surah Fatiha in describing Surah Fatiha and giving the explanations behind Surah Fatiha. We all know Surah Fatiha, we've all recited it, memorized it. And he says that in Surah Fatiha, we have all of the principles of the Qur'an and it's been chosen and decreed that this is the first ayah because it's an introduction. So everything that comes after Surah Fatiha is an explanation of Surah Fatiha itself. And from this, Imam Suyuti gets a principle and he says that the surah that comes before always gives you a general understanding of what is going to come after. So Surah Fatiha has many general statements, but the details are given in Surah Baqarah. Surah Baqarah has many general statements, but the details are given in Surah Al Imran and so forth. This is a qa'idah that Imam Suyuti has given us a principle that has given us. He said, if we understand this well, we will be able to understand the themes of the Qur'an and see how they are connected all the way from Surah Fatiha to all the way to Surah Nas. And it is actually connected, and as we will see through our sittings here. Imam Suyuti, when talking about Surah Fatiha, he, again, this is not a book where we're talking about the detailed tafsir of the ayat and, and, and the surahs. 
what we want is a general understanding of each surah and the, each context or each uh, paragraph of each surah, especially the longer ones like Surah Baqarah. So giving you a general idea of what Surah Fatiha is about, he quotes Hassan al-Basri. And Hassan al-Basri Allah, said that Surah Fatiha has two things. Number one, it has all of the principles and all of the information that you can find summarized from all of the previous books that Allah has revealed. All of this could be found in Surah Fatiha. Also, all of the sciences that are specific to our Sharia are also found in Surah Fatiha. So there's two qualities of Surah Fatiha. So Hassan al-Basri continues and he says, if you understand Surah Fatiha, you've understood all of the revelations that have come before and you've understood the rest of the Qur'an. <coughs> Another one from the Mufassirun has said that Surah Fatiha is divided into three parts. And the first part, the first four ayat, or the first three ayat, are talking about Tawheed and the oneness of Allah, Jalla wa'ala. The middle part is talking about worship. The middle part is talking about worship. And the last part of Surah Fatiha is talking about rules and compliance. Talking about rules and compliance. So now, if we understand the first, the middle, and the last part, we will understand how to become steadfast and how to get close to Allah and how to become better people and you know better individuals with Allah and with the rest of the creation. This is Surah Fatiha in a summary. Then the Shaykh Rahimullah moves on to Surah Baqarah. Why is Surah Baqarah called Surah Baqarah? Someone might think that it's an odd name for the biggest chapter in the Qur'an to be talking about a cow. Surah Baqarah is talking about resurrection. <coughs> and in Surah Baqarah we have at least four instances where Allah brings a story and brings a narrative of people, how they've been resurrected in this life as an ayah for other people. And the first instant came in the story of Baqarah. So the reason why Surah Baqarah is called Surah Baqarah is because it affirms the resurrection, it affirms Iman in Allah and it affirms the resurrection on the last day. And this sets up the theme for Surah Baqarah. Surah Baqarah, the theme of Surah Baqarah is to establish the Aqeedah which is correct and to establish the Ahkam, the rulings which will affirm those Aqeedah that you have in Allah and you are able to practice in your daily lives. So Surah Baqarah begins by saying ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِي And Imam Suyuti said that this is connected to Surah Fatiha like we said before there's generalities in Surah Fatiha which are explained in the details in Surah Baqarah When we say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen in Surah Fatiha Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim we are saying Alhamdulillah because he is the one who has sent us the book where there is no doubt Connection he is the one, and this is why we are saying Alhamdulillah. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه. But this book, who is it a guidance for? Allah says that next, Hudan lil للمتقين, who is it a guidance for? It is a guidance for those people who say, إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدن الصراط. So therefore, the, the theme or the order of Surah Fatiha has been relayed onto the next page also in Surah Baqarah. The first line of Surah Baqarah again affirms Tawheed of Allah, but it also affirms guidance and worship of Allah. Then Surah Baqarah goes on to talk about those people who are guided, those people who ask for guidance. It talks about those people who believe in the unseen, those people who establish the Salah, and those people who spend from what Allah has given to them. And they believe in the books that are being given to them, and they believe in Iman as it has been prescribed for them. But then Surah Baqarah begins to talk about another category of people and these are the people who have nifaq. And again, if we remember back to Surah Fatiha, the last category in Surah Fatiha is again talking about those people who are misguided or those people who have anger upon them. So again, the order is clearly found here. Surah Baqarah begins by affirming <coughs> Aqeedah and Tawheed for Allah and then it affirms those people who worship Him correctly and then it goes on now to talk about those people who have nifaq. And those people who have sold the truth for falsehood, those people who have 
chosen ignorance over knowledge. Surah Baqarah then goes on to talk about two types of nifaq. The first type of nifaq that it talks about are those, nif- those people who have nifaq, those people who have hypocrisy and disbelief in their hearts, but they, they show Islam and Iman, but they do this in private. They do this in private. So these people, this category of nifaq, they will appear to be Muslims, they will appear to be good Muslims maybe even, but they actually don't believe. And in their own private sittings, when they are alone with, by themselves or with their families or with their friends, you will see them talking bad about Islam and showing signs of disbelief. This is the first category of nifaq. Then there is another category of nifaq of those people who are clear and outright in their nifaq. So they say that they believe but openly show also signs of disbelief. And this is, this is how Allah describes these two categories of nifaq. They claim that they want good for people. Some of them, they use their aql and their intellect, and they do this to deceive people. They do this to deceive people. This is one sign of nifaq. Why has nifaq... How, why has Surah Baqarah quickly shifted onto talking about nifaq? And the ulama have talked about this also. And some of them have said that the harm of nifaq upon this ummah is very, very great. But some of them have also said that from this ummah and from this book, Khudan al Muttaqeen, Kitab La Ribafi, will come a great number of people in this ummah who will have nifaq. And this is why it's been directly connected to Surah Fatiha and the beginning of Surah Fatiha and the beginning of Surah Baqarah where it talks about belief in the book. Then Allah goes on to moving on talking about creation. Allah says, Jalla wa ala, Ya ayyuhal nas, Ubudu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum walladhina min qablikum la'allakum fattakun. Your Lord is the one who created you and he created all those before you and he created the earth and he created the heavens and he's created provisions for you. Again, Imam Suyuti said that this is connected to Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Again, affirming Tawheed once again. But now this is coming from a different perspective and a different angle. The next ayat or the next paragraph goes on to talking about the book. Allah says in the Quran, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِنْ مِثْلِهِ If you have a doubt on what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has come with, then prove something like it. Allah has said that he is the one who has created the heavens and the earth. He's created you and he's created the plants, he's created everything. Then he's given Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this book. How else did you get here? Allah is the one who created you. Who has made him a prophet? Allah is the one who has made him a prophet. So now here is the challenge. You know that Allah is the one who has created you. So how can you disbelieve in the instructions and the guidance that Allah has given to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And those people who are guided to it and affirm this and realize this, then Allah talks about Jannah for them. They will have Jannah. But those people who are not able to prove anything like this, then this will affect their iman in believing Allah as their creator. And for them, is a really bad end. Then Allah talks about, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَسْتَحِي أَنْ يَدْرِبَ مَثْلًا مَا بَعُودَةً فَمَا فَوْقَهَا Allah talks about a fly. And Allah says he doesn't, he is not shy of giving a parable of a fly. This comes after Allah has established creation for himself. Allah says that he is your creator. Look how perfect this creation is. <coughs> Therefore, he is the one who has given you this book. Look how perfect this book is. And there are many parables in this book that even if it was something very, very small, like the size of a fly, those people who disbelieve in Allah's book will also end up disbelieving in Allah as their creator. So even a very small benefit they will not be able to benefit from. Those people who do believe will benefit from everything. That even a size of a parable of a fly or ayah of a fly where they see the ayah of a fly in front of them, they know that Allah has created this fly. And if there is a spiritual parable in the Quran of a fly, then they believe in this also. 
But those people who do not believe, then Allah has misguided them from having the understanding of the Qur'an. They are those people, الَّذِينَ يَنْقُضُونَ أَحْدُ اللَّهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مِثَاقِهِ Allah has given them a book, Allah has given them a covenant. Those are those who disbelieve in this covenant and they break this covenant. So then Allah goes on to say, how can you break the covenant when Allah is the one who has created you? How long left? Allah is the one who has created you and He is the one who is going to resurrect you. Allah, then he goes on to say, Allah Jalla wa Ala, huwa alladhi khalaqa lakum ma fil ardi jami'a. He has created everything on earth for you, Bani Adam. So how are you put here? Why have you been put here? Obviously, it's come because you have been put here because he is your creator and he has given you this book to follow. And then he goes on, Jalla wa Ala, and he says that after he's created the heavens and the earth, he created a man. And this is the discourse that happened between the angels and Allah. I said he's going to create man to show that he is the one who is the one who creates and he is the one who will send prophets and he is the one who will send books and he is the one who will explain what is halal and what is haram this goes back to <laughs> guide us to the path of the prophets this is one of the prophets this is the very first prophet and this is why this parable has been put here Adam السلام, was created and he was told to do certain things and he was told to refrain from the certain things and he did those but unfortunately he slipped he slipped and this is the nature of man but Adam السلام, turned back to making tawbah to Allah Adam kalimat fataba Allah accepted his repentance this is connected to ar-rahman ar-rahim so we recite the fatiha it has a profound meaning behind it and it has a direct connection between you and your Lord. Then Allah said that He will send to us prophets and He will send to us anbiya and books. So even if you slip, you need to fo- hold on to this methodology. And even if you slip, you turn back to Allah and make Him feel good. Those people, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِعَيَاتِنَا When the prophets come and they disbelieve in them, those are the people who be held far. Then Allah moves on to talking about Bani Israel, and this is what we will end with today, بِإِذْنِ And this is a sign for the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ, sometimes in the Qur'an, says, يَا أَيُّهَا nas He's been told to tell the people. Sometimes in the Qur'an, he's been told to tell Bani Israel. Sometimes in the Qur'an, uh, or in the hadith, he, he, he directs his conversation to Quraysh. This is because the Prophet Sallallahu was a Nabi for all nations. So when he is saying, Jalla wa ala, Ya Bani Israel, is coming through the Prophet Sallallahu because this is showing that the Prophet Sallallahu is the correct messenger. And he has come as a messenger for you also. This is again, like the Shaykh Suyuti said, is connected to Maliki Yomitin. He is the one who has sent the prophets and he is the one that's going to gather them all on the day of judgment. So I ask Allah to make us benefit from this Ramadan and that he enables us to fast and to stand it and that he is pleased with us and he accepts it from us and that he frees us from the hellfire and he grants us his Jannah. And bi we'll continue with our, story, with our lectures from the Qur'an and this book from Imam Suyutu. Hada wa Allahu a'adam wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.